The most recent IPCC report which was released on 9th of August 2021 underlies the urgency of taking global action to stop climate change and deal with its unstoppable effects. So, what is IPCC report? How they found out that our Earth is in great danger? Human-induced climate change is already affecting many weather and climate extremes in every region across the globe. Scientists are also observing changes across the whole of Earth's climate system. In the atmosphere, in the oceans, ice flows, and on land. The IPCC is the body of the world's leading climate experts and scientists, formed in 1988 and charged with preparing comprehensive reports on the state of our knowledge of the climate. The IPCC does not conduct independent research, rather it convenes climate experts from around the world every five to seven years to synthesize the latest climate research findings in peer-reviewed and published scientific literature. The IPCC issued assessment reports in 1990, 1995, 2001, 2007, 2014 and first part of the sixth assessment report on 2021 and remaining two parts will be released on 2022. Each report runs to thousands of pages, representing the full spectrum of human knowledge of the climate system, but is reduced to a few key messages called a summary for policymakers or SPM, in a fortnight-long meeting of scientists. Under the rules of the IPCC, which was co-founded by the UN and the World Meteorological Organization, governments also play a key role at this stage and can temper the findings of the SPM. IPCC reports are never policy prescriptive but the conclusions are relevant to nations, states, and businesses interested in enacting policies to limit future warming and reduce the costs of climate change. So, why the 2021 report is heartbreaking? This was the first time the approval meeting for the report was conducted online. For the first time, the report offers an interactive atlas for people to see what has already happened and what may happen in the future to where they live. Global surface temperature has increased faster since 1970 than in any other 50-year period over at least the last 2,000 years. The authors believe that 1.5 degrees Celsius will be reached by 2040 in all scenarios. If emissions aren't slashed in the next few years, this will happen even earlier. They warn global warming of 2 degrees Celsius will be exceeded during the 21st century. For 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming, there will be increasing heat waves, longer warm seasons and shorter cold seasons. At 2 degrees Celsius of global warming, heat extremes are more likely to reach critical tolerance thresholds for agriculture and health. But it won't be just about temperature. For example, climate change is intensifying the natural production of water, the water cycle. This brings more intense rainfall and associated flooding, as well as more intense drought in many regions. It is also affecting rainfall patterns. In high latitudes, precipitation is likely to increase, while it is projected to decrease over large parts of the subtropics. Changes to monsoon rain patterns are expected, which will vary by region, the report warns. Moreover, coastal areas will see continued sea level rise throughout the 21st century, contributing to more frequent and severe coastal flooding in low-lying areas and coastal erosion. Extreme sea level events that previously occurred once in 100 years could happen every year by the end of this century. The report, however, gave hope that it is still possible from a physical science point of view to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees which means these changes could be slowed and stopped from getting worse. The science tells us that to limit the worst consequences of climate change, we must aim for net zero as soon as possible and by 2050 at the very latest, and that we need rapid short-term decarbonization efforts this decade. Reaching net zero involves reducing greenhouse gas emissions as much as possible using clean technology, then burying any remaining releases using carbon capture and storage, or absorbing them by planting trees. 
As we have learned from the COVID-19 pandemic, prevention is better, and far less costly, than cure.